Good evening, honorable panel members, uh, colleagues, friends, ladies and gentlemen. It's been my great honor to share some of my experiences in preparing the FES proposal. First, I would like to thank RGC for their kind invitation and also my university for the research support. Due to limited time, I'll try to focus more on developing an innovative research question with enough contribution. After all, a good research idea is the founding stone of a proposal. Then I'll try to talk about allocating contents in the proposal and also one or two remarks about the budget. But before I carry on, uh, my very first recommendation is to read the FDS guidelines very carefully before you start writing the proposal. Now we all know that an interesting research question is the key to get our paper get published and also get our projects get funded. Um, in general, I'll classify research questions into three types. The first one is that you can identify a new research area that has been understudied. I'll say this is a high risk, high return area because it's obviously innovative when nobody has studied it before. But at the same time, it's also difficult to persuade the panel that it's an important area to study, given that there is no uh, prior literature to support your arguments. My three projects have been in this area. The first one is to study a new auditing standard that had been implemented in Hong Kong for about two years when I submitted the proposal. In order to get a bigger sample size, I propose to use the UK data instead. The second one is to utilize the COVID-19 as a setting and to investigate how auditing may differentiate from normal period. Again, when I submitted the proposal, COVID-19 was still going on in Hong Kong, so it was a timely subject. Lastly, um, the third one is about the state-owned enterprises they audit in China. When we conducted the literature review, surprisingly, we didn't find much relevant research, so it has been an understudy area. I understand that it's been really difficult to generate new research question, not to mention in a new area. So I guess thinking about some cross-disciplinary study or generating idea from anecdotal evidence may help. Now, of course, if you do have any new research idea, do consider me as one of your co-eyes so we could collaborate further. Um, the second type of research question is that you can find a new perspective in a current research area. So this is what we mostly do in our research, right? For example, in auditing, uh, we know that audit partner will have an inference on the audit outcome. We also know that audit firm will have an inference on the audit outcome. So this is an old research area. However, who has a relative importance in the inference than it hasn't been studied before, so it becomes a new perspective to study. Now the third type is that you simply want to get a new research variable in a current research question. For example, our current literature already establishes association between auditor expertise and audit fee. If you simply want to study further about the relationship between auditor expertise and audit report time lag, then probably this isn't very innovative and it will become difficult to get the funding. Now, besides showing that your research idea is innovative, it's also important to show that it has a great contribution. By talking about contribution, I don't refer to academic contribution, but rather something that's beyond academia, as quoted here in the FDS guideline. So in the pathway to impact statement, you may talk about whether the project can bring in any new products or new patents, or whether it will have any policy implication. In my proposal, I'll normally talk about the impact on the regulators, on the industry, and also on education. Because I'm in the accounting research area, and we don't usually create any new products or new patent, so I'll try to sell to the panel that my project has a regulatory impact. For example, the project results can inform the regulator about something that's important, or it can help the regulators to consider whether a specific policy should be adopted or not. 
Now, also note that the FDS guideline actually require us to talk about whether the project can have any enhancement on the undergraduate study. So please don't forget to mention that in the pathway to impact statement as well. Another thing I think is important is to link your project to Hong Kong. In fact, in the Q&A session on the UGC website, relevance to Hong Kong is a factor that will be considered by the panel. In my projects, one of them is Hong Kong based, so it's definitely related to Hong Kong. For the remaining two, I'll try to explain that they have a policy implication to Hong Kong regulators, so it's also related to Hong Kong. I also did a little research over the supported projects last year, and as you can see, whichever subject areas you are from, if your project can link to Hong Kong, you often get a higher chances of getting the funding. Now, once you have generated a good research question that have enough contribution and it is innovative, the remaining task is to put it into a proposal. Our proposal is pretty short. The maximum pages is only eight pages, uh, but we still need to write it like a journal paper, but only without results and table. And normally, we'll divide the main content into background and research methodology. In the background part, I'll discuss the institutional background and also prior literature, so I could position my project. A detailed but precise literature discussion is important because it can help to develop the hypothesis. Then, in the research methodology part, again, it should be detailed but precise. So you should really explain how you plan to carry out your project. For example, will you take on any survey or hand collection of data? Will you do any experiment or stimulation? If you do a regression, what the regression model will look like? Where will you obtain your data? This information doesn't only justify your project. Let's say you may need an RA or you may need to acquire databases or equipment, but it can also show to the panel that your project is actually feasible and you can just start on it at any time. Then, in the research output part, I'll talk about the expected publication. Here, I can also show the academic contribution of the project as well. Now, finally, I have two remarks about the budgeting. First, always remember to include the teaching relief. You may note that I've been applying for FES in consecutive years, and I only do so because I forgot to include teaching relief when I first applied for FES for my very first time. So it's really important to include that, or it will become super painful to balance your research and teaching life. Second, if you do need an RA, probably including a junior RA would be enough, as suggested by the panel. That's all for my sharing, and I wish everyone good luck in our future applications. Thank you very much.